Yes, I promise you I do this one a little bit faster. So let's do that. Um, so from 14 to 22, we jumped uh, 108. And from 10 to 37, we had 27 jumps to do that in. So our common difference, we spanned that gap of 108 in 27 jumps. So we must have been adding four every time. So my common difference is four. So I've got my common difference. All I need to know is what my first term is. So I can pick either point that I want. I'm going to take this one here because it's smaller numbers. And I can say, oh, oh, I'm using this idea that I can get any term I want by taking my first term and adding my common difference and minus one time. This formula will get you everywhere like this. And then if you're dealing with sums, there's one other formula. So if you don't know, you just plug stuff into this. So if my 10th term is 14, that means I'm going to get an answer of 14, right? But my n is 10. So I can get my 10th term by taking my first term and adding my common difference 10 minus 1 times. So in this case, I can say I'm going to get 14 if I start off with my first term and I add that for uh, basically 9 times. So a sub 1, and then you just solve for a sub 1, and the hardest part is going to be subtracting. So you get negative 22 is your first term. I can speak negative 22 is your first term. And so now your explicit formula is just you can get any term you want by taking that first term, negative 22, and keep adding that common difference of 4 and minus 1 times. I kind of like it in that form, that point slope form, but the answer key does distribute uh, that and you get negative 26 plus 4n and you get that. Looks good. And then in the last problem, uh, the last question I forgot to do recursive. So this this formula is our explicit formula. We call it explicit because we can get answers explicitly. It's very easy for me to get like my hundredth term by just plugging in a hundred and it's like, boom, got it. Um, but if you want a recursive formula, that's okay. Not hard at all. Your recursive formula just means that you're getting any term based on the previous term. So for arithmetic, it always has this setup. You take your previous term, a sub n minus 1, right? So if you wanted the fifth term, you would take the fourth term and so on. And you add or subtract, if you're subtracting, your common difference. So for mine, I want to take the previous term and my common difference was 4. So that's it. But I do need to tell it where to start. So it always has two pieces. Uh, start with negative 22. So that's a beautiful way of describing arithmetic series. That's a very intuitive way of, of talking about arithmetic series. We just start with negative 22 and we just keep adding 4, right? Negative 18, negative 14, negative 10, da 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 da. And talking about adding 4 is. Again, very intuitive way of talking about arithmetic sequences. People get scared of the notation. We get scared of the a sub n minus 1. Don't be scared. It's there every time. Just means the previous term. Um, so even though it's a very natural way of talking about the series, it's not as functional as your explicit uh, formula. Because like, let's say I wanted the hundredth term here. It would say, OK, take a sub 100 minus 1, basically take the 99th term and add 4. And I'm like, OK, great. Uh, what's the 99th term? Well, the 99th term is the 98th term plus 4. It's like, OK, great. So yeah, there you go. So not super useful for finding particular terms unless you know terms around it, but a beautiful way of describing. OK, that's it.